Hey everybody, Aaron Blades here. It's October. Boy, I almost said April. It's October 29th, Friday. And we are back again doing, I can't believe another week's gone by. Yeah. But uh, we're back again doing a new live stream. And it's uh, two days before Halloween. So we thought, how about, let's do a little Halloween stream today. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but we'll do something. And uh, But before we get to that, we got a, another sale going on. We got a Halloween sale. Goes until November first, and it is thirty percent off of everything on the site. Yeah, some things thing. being up to sixty percent, right? Yeah, absolutely. Some of the courses are everything's thirty percent off or more, basically. So some things are fifty percent off, some things are sixty yeah, percent off. So we got I some good that. deals going. Absolutely, oh, we're really excited. You know what we're gonna do tonight? We're gonna do. We're gonna go see the Rolling Stones tonight. Oh, that's tonight. Yeah. Oh, I've wanted to go my whole life. I've been wanting to see the Stones for so long. I'm really sad that I miss Charlie, Charlie Watts. But um, but we're going to see them uh, tonight in Tampa. Yeah, we got these tickets in March of 2020. Yeah, that's that's right. when, when we bought them. And uh, 18 months later, we're finally able to go to the concert. There you so. go. And isn't so, it supposed to be like their final tour or something like that? No, I, I don't think it is. I I think it might be. Well, it might be, but they haven't announced anything like that. But it hasn't been announced as that. Yeah. I mean, although, I mean, they've only got so much in them. I mean, Mick and the rest of the gang, they're almost they're almost 80 years old at this point. And I think Charlie, Charlie, Charlie was, was 82, 80. I think, when he passed. Yeah, yeah so anyway. Uh, I was supposed to go see them uh, about 15 years ago uh, in Los Angeles, and I confused the day and uh, actually slept through it. Had great tickets too, but um. But anyway, we got Dustin here with us, Dustin Blaze, my son. Hi. And we got Nick Birch on the other desk over there. Hola. And uh, and I'm gonna draw today. I'm gonna maybe a wolf. I want to do some kind of traditional. And I thought I'd try just a different technique. I'm always doing kind of the same techniques, and so I thought, you know, why not do? I might do like an uh, a simulated ink technique today. Oh, you know what? Also, before we jump in, and I don't have a slide for it. But I just because I neglected to send one, but um, we also have a new course up for pre order. Oh, that's Tony, right, from Tony, oh my Cipri- gosh. Yeah. from Tony Cipriano. We've got a new course on making monsters in ZBrush, it's part of the sale, it's 50% off. So if you go to creatureartteacher.com, uh, you can see that as well. And I might come up with a little slide, yeah. How did we forget that? Stuff. Shoot, but um, maybe I'll uh, show it on your screen in a minute, Aaron, just to yeah, just to get something up there. But um, yeah, Tony Cipriano, who, for those of you that have gotten our the uh, sculpting in ZBrush, will know that he's a great, great sculptor, great teacher. Um, gosh, I wish I could take the camera around here. Can I? I uh, don't know if we have enough light. You me. won't have sound. What are you trying to do? I want to show the. I want to show the cast. Well, I can grab grab one at a time, Fred. Where's he wants camera, to show the group. Where's the camera locked into? It's locked into there. No, no, but how much? How much? Just well, take it off of there. I just want to, if we can do this, if we can do this, I want to show this to you guys. You're not going to get good audio. No, no, no. I'm not worried about the auto. I just want to, I just want to show them this really quick. Okay, no, I just want to look around the corner. Here, I'll, I'll bring the kids. No, no. I want to show them the whole thing. Yeah, that's the whole thing. The whole point of it. Oh, uh, that's all right. Um, where's it? Oh, yeah, this one. Justin? Is this, this one, one right here? Is this one right now? It is. It's not fun. That's okay. I'm just going to poke it around the corner. And I'll put it right back. It's happening live, everybody. So here we go. So look at this. This is... Yeah, move the light right there. Move the light. And also get the same off here. Oh, we're okay. No, it could be... Sure. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> I, I know, I, I, I put you on the spot. We'll do it live! I really don't like this power cord. Yeah, this is the worst power cord of all time. Oh, oh, the, the, oh there you go, you got it. Yeah. There you go. Finally. So, I want to just show you this because most of these maquettes Tony made. This is a, a little collection of maquettes I have outside my office. And you can see right here, you can see right here, I've, I've got, it's all my, all of the, um, 
Brother Bear, and just everything. And Tony Cipriano made all of these. We hired him for uh, for Brother Bear, and uh, he was in charge of all of them. I've got a few other maquettes mixed in there, as you can see. But, um, but all of these right here, that's an entire set from Brother Bear, uh, all made by Tony Cipriano. And so all this... All this kerfuffle I just made, it was just to emphasize how good of a, of a uh, sculptor Tony is. Sorry about that, Dustin. Thank you for being so patient. Um, I'm going to need an extra 20 minutes to follow it. <laughs> Here, let me see if I can get it. So, but anyway, um, oh, you got it that quick? Yeah, yeah I finally figured. It goes in a lot easier, easier than it comes out. That's the, gotcha. uh, that cord adapter is. But, uh, but anyway, so Tony um, has got this new course, and um, uh, and he, you know, he did all the maquettes for us on Brother Bear, and he did he did several on Mulan as well. Uh, someone's asking, that's super awesome. What kind of clay do they use for the sculptures? Those are Sculpey. Yeah, they were done. Those are so. Those are reproductions. Those ones that you, they're not reproductions, but they're they're, they're cast. Like, so what what would happen is he would sculpt them, um, in Sculpey, and then they would create uh, molds from from the original. The original actually get destroyed, basically, and then they're able to pour a whole bunch of molds. Are, are they're able to from the mold they're able to pour a whole bunch of copies and uh sorry i'm I'm drawing and think i'm thinking and trying to talk at the same time but they pour the copies and uh it comes out really cool i'm hearing a clicking. how long have they have those uh, maquettes been in storage oh those, those maquettes are in storage for a long time Turn a clicking sound. Is that the hard drive's clicking? Is that oh. not a good sign? But it's not. I was reading the comments and I look up and see what you're drawing. And when I just saw the head, I'm like, are you drawing a bear? No, this is going to be a, a wolf. A wolf. Werewolf. Jay on YouTube says, I've waited 363 days for another one of these Halloween streams. <laughs> what are the names of the uh, Africa Big Five? Uh, it is uh, uh, Rhino, uh, Elephant. Elephant. Um, rhino. Rhino. Is giraffe? No. Lion. Lion. Uh, leopard. Um, cheetah? I don't know if the cheetah is part of that or not. Cape Buffalo? Is it Hippo? No, no it's Cape not. Buffalo is part of the Big Five, I think. I'm pretty sure, actually. Uh, do I, I don't know. You have to look it up. Why do you think they're called, called the Big Five? Because they're the Big Five. They're, they're it is Cape five. Buffalo, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the ones everybody wants to see. That's that's what it means. Oh, I don't like that arm. Lion, leopard, black rhino, African bush elephant, and the Cape buffalo. There you go. The term was actually coined by big game hunters. Mm. And it refer refers to the five most difficult to hunt on foot. But they're also the ones, therefore, people want to see on uh, safari as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the only one that uh, we didn't see in the big five until we were leaving is the uh black rhino the, yeah the rhino yeah so everything else but the rhinos <laughs> one guy i was watching on youtube uh somebody that i follow <laughs> he got to see a white a white rhino and a black rhino literally right next to each other oh wow wow oh, that's cool. cool that was in um where was he he was in to Nairobi to Nairobi
No, not it wasn't Nairobi because that's where we were. Um, it was. Uh, wait one second. Are you fellas dressing up for Halloween? Probably not, but I am going to be camped out. Our tradition is uh, kind of camp out out in the front. Actually, I don't know what Nick's doing this year. but okay. Well, I have a four-year-old son, so I'm going to be going trick-or-treating. Um, we're probably going to just do a table with... Selena's completely decorated the house. Um, Maybe but, we'll get together. But... Uh, we might, yeah, we might come over to this neighborhood and come trick or treating, or we might just. We're gonna probably, see, you know, having just moved, we're gonna try to scope out where the good neighborhoods and streets to go are. But um, someone on Twitch yeah. says, "Oh my God, are you drawing a werewolf?" Oh my God, yes. Oh my God, he's drawing werewolves. But uh, Angelo on Facebook asks, "Any updates on when your books will start shipping?" Well, there you go, Nick. That's for you. Yes. So the answer is we don't have an exact update yet, but the latest we have heard is that UPS was picking, was taking, uh, supposed to be taking hold of the cargo ship. So, or sorry, not the cargo ship, the container. Uh, in which case, that means we're very close because then they just unload the container and, and bring it straight to us. We could have a tracking number any day. Um, but we don't have confirmation if that happened yet or not. So that means there's still time to get in on the pre-order. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash books, you can get either of the two signed books uh, there, and you are guaranteed a signed copy as long as you get in on the pre-order. So once the once we have the books in hand, the pre-order is over, and the um, uh, we'll, we're going to start shipping them. So that's the latest on that. Creatureartteacher.com slash books. But we are inching dangerously close to having them in hand. Dangerously close. I say dangerously because Aaron's going to have a, probably a wrist injury when it comes time to sign all the books. Going to have a little carpal tunnel. I'm I, really excited for Tony's new course. I think it's going to be super cool. Yeah. Hi, Aaron, Dustin, and Nick. Hey. Uh, hope you're all doing well. I'm going to be leaving for Hawaii in a few days, and I remembered that you said you're that you've been there. I was hoping to ask if uh, ask you for any recommendations on wonderful drawing locations. Well, do, I don't know. I'm sure where you're going, what island. Every island is very different. Um, if you're going to Kauai, there isn't a bad spot you can be for drawing. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that. And in Kauai, everywhere is beautiful. Well, actually, everywhere in Hawaii. Yeah, you can't. You really can't find a bad place in Hawaii to draw. Um, just the moment you step off the plane, just start drawing. Yeah. You know, I really was living in Florida for more than half my life now. I never had any desire or draw to go to Hawaii. I was like, yeah, I live in Florida. What's what's the big deal? I mean, it's tropical here. We have palm trees. I'm sure it's nice, but I never was like, oh, man, I, did, I never had a burning desire to go there. <laughs> we went two years ago. It was my wife and I's 10th anniversary, and Aaron suggested we go to Kauai, and it blew, blew me away. I yeah. mean, it absolutely blew me away. Florida doesn't even look like the tropics compared to Hawaii. It's amazing. You come back here and you're like, oh, I, it's not even close. To this <laughs> thing. It's its own thing. There's there's the Caribbean tropics, which we're still not quite there. I mean, I love Florida, don't get me wrong, but it's not. It's I just Hawaii, just the life, just the the eruption of life on those islands is yep. so green and lush. And, yep. Yeah, it's pretty insane. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. I'm not sure. I might have to pull. YouTube question. Aaron, have you ever seen a Sumatran rhino? Uh, I have seen them, not in person, not in, uh, in the wild. Um, but I have seen them, yes. At zoos, basically. Yeah, I can't. I'm trying to remember which zoo it was because I, um, 
Did they have Sumatrans in in Tommen? Because remember, I got the footage of the. Oh, those might have been Indian rhinos. All right, I think. Yeah, they were Indian rhinos. Where where were you talking about? The Tommen Zoo. And oh yeah, those are Indians. Yeah, it pretty much. It's uh, Indian rhinos anywhere you go. I think uh, um, San Diego has Sumatran. What were uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson uh, like? And did you ever get to have lunch or dinner with them? Yeah, matter of fact, I had lunch with with Ollie right before he passed. Um, I didn't know them obviously as well as many of the other guys that were there longer than me. Um, but they used to come to the studio every once in a while in Florida and uh, come and see us and you know, when there was a publicity thing to be had, you know, when we, when we get a new movie done, I think when, I think they came when Beauty and the Beast was done. But they were great guys. Did you see the teaser trailer for Lightyear? Yeah, I did, man. It looks so good. I really love the art direction on it. Definitely looking forward to that. Dustin, did you see the, the preview for Cowboy Bebop? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it actually, I mean, not having watched the cartoon, it actually looks good to me. But yeah, I. It looks in the spirit huge, of the cartoon. And it, being a huge Cowboy Bebop fan, like after seeing the trailer, I mean, I do understand that they're trying to make Cowboy a, Bebop nerd. They're trying to make a twist to it and all, but I'm not quite feeling it too well myself. So I thought it looked cool. I mean, I don't know the story really, so but the the visuals I thought looked in line with the cartoon for as much as you're going to be able to bring a cartoon to live action. Yeah, they recently. Um, it looked a lot better in motion than in the stills. I'll say too. Yeah, they recently um, released. Not only the trailer for uh, the live action, but they also released the entire series of uh, the anime Bebop on Netflix. Oh, cool. So I would recommend, um, even if it's just a few episodes, just watch a couple of uh, episodes, whether halfway through or or something, just to get a feel for what the actual anime is. Yeah, I've caught it in the past, like little bits here and there, but I've never really sat down and gone through it. I'll, I'll think of it a little... This is looking nice, Aaron. See what happens when you flip it, though? It starts to go, ooh, that's wonky. <laughs> this is why you flip your drawings. Uh, from uh, Jade Price, a uh, question for everybody. Since Aaron's drawing a werewolf for this Halloween live stream, do you have any favorite werewolf creature designs throughout pop culture? Hmm. I think my favorite wer werewolf movie is American Werewolf. I was just going to say the the transformation in that movie is so so well it was all practical effects and that yeah, was pretty amazing. <clears throat> uh, any tip uh, to draw muscle uh, male arms? To draw muscles on male like, arms? Like muscular male arms. Yes. Take an anatomy class so you can understand the muscles. I've got a uh, I've got an anatomy course on my site. Uh, creatureartteacher.com, which is 30% off today, by the way. It might even be more. Who knows? Somebody commented when you were talking about uh, Hawaii, saying uh, Florida can't compare to Hawaii. The water is so blue, there's um, there's almost unnatural. Well, if you've never been to the Keys, the Keys are definitely give Hawaii a run for its money, but it's a whole <laughs> different world. It's a different. It's almost comparing apples to, to oranges. It's it's. Yeah. Um, yeah, another another tropical <laughs> location that I would love to go back to is the is the Bahamas. Yeah. Now those are some clear waters. <laughs> yeah, and you've you've had the the 
you've had the the opportunity to hit both Hawaii and the Bahamas and you know and, and the, the eastern tropics and the western tropics. Yeah. By the way, the human anatomy class is thirty percent off. I just posted the link for everybody. Oh good. So I'm just shoring things up here. I gotta change this eraser. I got it stuck on there. Oh, I got it stuck on the airbrush. I don't quite remember if I still stuck on air airbrush. Hmm? Stop it! Stop it! Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Man, I don't remember if I asked this uh, question for this person already, but in case for latecomers, uh, what kind of drawing tablet do you use? Oh, I'm using a Wacom Pro 32. It's 32 inches. It's big. It's Wacom's biggest one. I'm also going to be doing a review soon. So watch out for that in the coming weeks. Wacom has just come out with a new 16-inch Pro. And uh, I'm going to be doing a review of that. Do you know, is it a update to the Wacom one or is it a... No, this one's a straight up, this is a more high end. Gotcha. So it's got a higher price point. Um, I think it's a 4K screen, the whole deal. He said it's a, um, it's a new, new Cintiq Pro? Yeah, 16. There we go. <laughs> Is this me or does Werewolf have a Beauty and the Beast uh, beast expression? Well, maybe he does, considering I, I drew the beast so many times. <laughs> <laughs> and Martin also says, this werewolf looks like he's stepping on a Lego with his bare foot. <laughs> Aha, 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 aha. I still don't like this composition. Let me see what I can do here. Composition. Okay, there's where we started. I'm going to have to blow them up, I think. Blow them up? Blow them up? What kind of explosives are we talking about? No. C4, dynamite. Yeah, that feels better. Got a nice portrait. I like the negative shape. I like the negative shape. shape. YouTube question. What tips would you have for drawing and animating a creature that's been extinct for 200 million years? I'm working on a gorgon gorgonocipid and figuring out the overall form and how it should move. Well, that's, that's it. I mean, you got to... The, the question was, how do I figure it out? Mm -hmm. Or what tips would you have? Well, the, the, first of all, I would, I would get as much education in uh, locomotion from a creature similar to that as you can. Find what's, what's, what's existing that moves like that creature and study that. Um, you know, that's what we do. It's what you did, you know, like in, in the, with the with the uh, Velociraptors, it was looking at ostriches and and chickens and things like that, and um, see what you can find that's similar. So I want to try something different here. Sandra asks, "Is the Wacom a computer, or do you need to wire it to your computer?" You need to wire it to your computer. They do have. The Wacom, is it the Wacom 1? No, the Wacom 1 is also just a monitor. Um, it's the Wacom it was the uh, mobile Companion, studio. Mobile Studio, yeah. 
that that um that is a self-contained i don't know if they still make that unit real quick yeah pen computers the wacom mobile studio pro still exists it is a full computer but what you're using is called a pen display yes Did you ever meet Chuck Jones? No. I always wanted to. Never do. I'm going to try to see if changing the ears. I know he's humanoid, so the ears are okay to have down on the side a little bit, but wolves tend to have ears a little bit further up. Does this look too big to you? I went that big? Almost looks like a bat, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah. If I make his ears a little wider. What was your favorite Disney character that you loved drawing? Um, I loved drawing and animating. It was hard at first, but once I got the hang of them, I loved drawing the beast. You know, I, I did a lot of really fun animation in that movie. And um, stuff that I still, you know even though it was 30 years ago, we were working on that. Oh, stuff I'm still pretty proud of. I'm going to get the silhouette to, to look right. It's like this subtle little shape I'm trying to get. I don't Someone also asked if we record these videos. Yeah, <clears throat> all of our live streams are always available basically on our YouTube channel right after the stream is done. Um, Facebook as well. And usually I go in and add them as highlights on Twitch for those of you that watch on Twitch. Although sometimes I forget to do that because it's a manual process. <laughs> we'll try something here. We're going to try something here. Yeah. Yeah. So it says uh, maybe the space between the ears and, uh, and skull is spacey. It is. It's a little, but I'm trying to I'm trying to get a, a merge between the between humanoid and wolf because humans obviously have their we have our ears on each side and a wolf has the ears they almost touch you know it's very close so I'm trying to do something in between. How many times did you have to draw the beast during your time on that film? <laughs> That's like asking somebody, how many steps did you take last week? <laughs> uh, I have no idea. It was a lot. Lost count? Oh, yeah. You don't really keep track of your drawings as an animator. You just, you just do a lot of drawings. I just listened to your uh, Bancroft Brothers animation podcast. The stories about your time at Disney were so funny, the pranks, etc. Can you tell us some more stories? Yeah, I mean, it was every day was just an adventure and fun to be there. And, um, you know, we'd get into these big rubber band fights. And uh, Austin and Dustin, my daughter and my son, used to come in to visit with their mother. You know, and we'd have lunch together, and a lot of times we'd be in the middle of a rubber band fight, so I'd just lift the kids up and use them as a shield, So, because I knew no one would shoot the kids. <laughs> Don't shoot the kids! <laughs> what channel, or, I'm sorry, not channel, what do you think of the 1970s Robin Hood Disney movie? What do you think of the style? Yeah. That's the first, um, that's the first Disney film I saw in the theater when I was a little kid. Um, I loved it. That's it. <laughs> like one of those things where you hear it even once, 
and it'll get stuck in your head for the rest of the day. Yep. Did you ever see uh, Monster Squad, Aaron? I don't know if I did or not. Was that like a 1980s thing? Yeah. I can't remember. Kick them in the nards. Oh, my God. Wolfman's got nards. Oh, yeah. I remember that line. <laughs> Steve just was commenting that. Uh, it's a classic. It's a B classic, but it's... How long after they posted to the membership course theme? This is an interesting question. YouTube, is there, I'm sorry, Dustin, you just had a question. I didn't mean to step on it. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to understand what this person is asking. Uh, she, she wrote, how long after they posted to the membership course thing? What? Like Say she, it again. How long after they posted uh, to the membership course thing? How like, long after uh, they like? Post- how long do you have access until uh, when you apply for a membership? They might be talking about the streaming. Mem- if they're talking about the monthly streaming membership, where you're, where you get access to the classes on a, on a monthly basis, new classes become available to that sixty to ninety days after we release. Uh, so when a new new course comes out on the website for purchase, if you're an annual member, you get it right away. If you're a monthly member, it becomes available to you ninety days after, typically after its release. <clears throat> Hope that answers it. Um, let's see. Where was the question that I just had? Oh, was there ever a movie that you loved as a kid, but when you went back to as an adult, you hated it? No, not really. Um, there was movies that scared, like horror films that scared the hell out of me as a kid. And I uh, went back later and laughed. One in particular, I always talk about this because I remember it just scaring me so badly. It was... Uh, 1972 it came out and it was gargoyles not animated gargoyles this is a live action oh. made for <laughs> cbs i think it was cbs movie and uh man it scared me i remember laying there on the couch late at night everyone had gone to bed and i was still up watching it There's a lot of movies that don't hold up as well. Like there's a remember there's it's usually special effects. Oh right? yeah, I mean like you go back and you think, "Oh man, that movie was so cutting edge." And then you go back and you watch it and it's just like <laughs> like any time they use future technology in a movie like and then you're like I'm just, like John Carpenter's The Thing, right? Yeah. It's a great movie. But then like when he's, you know, when they're using computers and stuff, it just looks so cheesy. Well, I, well, but what's interesting is go back to the way you were thinking back then, because I remember the very first CG films, well, The Last Starfighter, and right, I, yeah. and I remember thinking, oh my god, it looks real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but even that, I mean, look at go back and look at uh, Toy Story. Oh yeah. I remember thinking Toy Story looked real. Which Dracula? I remember when the, the dinosaurs looked real. The movie of Disney. Oh yeah. Which Dracula do you prefer? <clears throat> Bella Lugosi. I'm pretty. I like the Bram Stoker one. The the '90s one. A uh, question for composition. Is it better to keep a uh, composition simple and not make it too complex to read? Well, it depends on what you're trying. That's uh, that's that's a hard question to answer. It depends on what you're trying to get across. Because complex compositions can work perf- perfectly fine if they're laid out, you know, in the right way. It just it matters. It depends on what you're really what you're trying to achieve. And the person I was asking about the memberships uh, uh, said, yes, the streaming. I'm, I'm an annual. Thank you. 
So well, that, on an so annual, that was what she was asking about. On an annual, you get it right away. Right. Yeah. So as soon as the class is available, being yeah, doing a being a streaming member and an annual member are two different things. I don't know. I don't know. I feel where like you, it needs. Where do you source your pen nibs from? Ink splatters. Just throw some ink splatters on it, Aaron. Yeah. My pen nibs. I. You know, this is the same nib I've had. I haven't changed nibs on this stylus since I got this. Um. I used to change my nib every probably three weeks. Because I use the little felt tip ones. This is a hard plastic. It's the same nib I've had for like two years. Yeah, because the newer Cintiqs, the one you have, the Wacom 32, the, the, the glass itself has texture. Yeah. So you don't need that felt texture feeling anymore. So you, you, that's why you switched, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, plus, I, I've, I've kind of gotten used to the smooth texture. Danny on Twitch says, hello, Aaron. This looks incredible. Hello. Hello. Uh, could you yeah, elaborate just... on how to make a picture more realistic or 3D? Oh, there's all kinds of, you know, it's it's lighting, it's value. It's, I mean, there's any number of things that make it look and feel more realistic. Um, that's a hard question to answer just because it's, it's there's so many elements that that contribute to that. But it's it, a lot of it's lighting. I want to remind people who might have jumped in late that we've got a uh Halloween sale going on on our website. Everything is 30% off or more. A lot of the courses are 50% off, 60% off. The brush sets are all uh, 30, 40, and 50% off. So uh, if you go to creatureartteacher.com now, that runs through November 1st. Right on. We always get a lot of people that hop into the stream late, so. So many comments. Uh, greetings from Peru. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, eh? It would be fantastic if you create a Discord server for your followers and people who's taking your courses. Discord has become a very powerful tool for the student community. And thank you so much. Your digital paintings and Photoshop course was good. I even made it my own. I even made my own brushes uh, for a project I worked on. Oh, that's great. We are definitely planning a Discord server. It's just still yep. on the to-do list. Yep, we are. It's a it's a hard thing once you get it started. If I understand it right, it's a hard thing to kind of maintain, and we we're kind of spread thin. But I think Dustin's going to help us out with it a little bit. It's more just about moderating and keeping it up and yeah. all that stuff. So it's definitely something we want to do, though. So we're it's coming probably sooner than later. We might start it with members first. Yeah, as, as an added benefit of being a member. We'll just start with that and then see, you know, grow it from there. Kind of like a testing bed? Sort of, exactly. I guess you could call it a closed beta. Exactly, yep, private beta. Private beta sounds like a military... It's a, a mousy military guy. Private beta. And Sergeant Alpha. And Martin says you could give this creature some clown makeup. <laughs> That's what it needed is the that classic diamond shape. So that's one thing I still don't get is why people are so afraid of clowns. <laughs> I am I'm the, I guess, the oddball. I love clowns. I loved them as a kid. Because you are a clown. I had a clown. Well, it's true. I had a clown <laughs> decorated room when I was a kid. 
Did you really? Yeah. I liked hobo <laughs> I like hobo clowns. I like I like the, the classic Ringling. I was a big Ringling fan, like the circus fan, so I loved I I love that 40 of them can fit into a car. <laughs> I think every I think that really happened when it came out. I think when it came out the television show and Tim Curry was so creepy in that. Um I think that's Oh, the whole happened. fearing clowns thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it and and just any other uh horror, like horror movie from I I think like the whole horror of clowns started like what was it late 70s early 80s and and since then there was a quite a fair amount of horror films that had some form of a scary clown in there yeah well it the tv and, show i think came out yeah that was 1986 i, I think was just gonna say out. it was like 86 87 i remember i was in high school but yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but I mean, actually, we're wrong. That came out in '90, Aaron. The one with Tim Curry. Yeah, really? When did I remember it being when I was in high school? I guess I'm making up that memory. Oh no, that's wild. When, when was it? '81, you said? No, it came out in '90. '90. '90. I thought it was older than that too. What? Yep. Yeah. I mean, that still makes it 40 years old. Are you thinking of? Um... <laughs> Uh, well, not clowns, like, uh, 30, 30 years old. What was, that other, years what was the other movie that was in it? Was it Clowns, clowns from Space or something? Yeah, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, but that was that was later, and that's more comedy than. I mean, the, to the a kid. brush I'm using, by the way, this brush is that part of 80. my uh, custom brush set. Killer Clowns from Outer Space was 1988. Wonderful. Ever heard of uh create a link for that? Ever heard of Frizz Freeling? Yeah, Fritz Freeling. And uh Bob Clampett? Yep. What you said create a, a link for the pastel brush? Is that what you said? Well just for the uh yeah, for the for the whole set if you can. Because I I'm just I was just telling him that the brush I'm using right now, it's not my pastel C, it's the um which one is it? It's my hard chalk. But it's in the same set, right? It's in the same set, yeah, exactly. Zonji's here. And hey, Zonji. It says, Nick, if a clown offers you a paper boat down in the sewer, what are you going to do? I say yes. <laughs> Clowns are friendly. <laughs> and I assume there will be giant ninja turtles there as well. Come down here, man. We got pizza. <laughs> When will Aaron release a Killer Clowns course? <laughs> Are you familiar with Mike uh, Plugs? Uh, Plugs car art? Who? Uh, it's two O's. I don't know if it's if it's it Plug. Mike Plug. Yeah. He did a lot of the horror comics of the 70s and 80s. If I can look up that. Oh, where's the highlight thing, Nick? Is it this one? Show soft. No, that's soft red. Where's the highlight thing? Highlight what? For, to highlight the cursor. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I forgot how to do that. It's probably. I guess I can kind of see that. Yeah, here's the. Sorry. I'm going to pop up with Freer. the. Freer. Presentify. Here we go. And now I can kind of see that. Oh, there. This is one of um, my. This here's one of Mike Plug's uh, art pieces. 
Oh, oh that's neat. That's mm. neat. That's kind of what I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. Same kind of shirt and everything. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. Frank on YouTube says, John Wayne Gacy didn't help the nice clown movement either. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. The what? <laughs> it was a serial killer that dressed up as a clown. I forgot. Oh, what was yeah. The real one. I wonder if that's how the whole horror probably clown started. That, that would make sense. Man, American Horror Story had that. That freaking clown was scary. But it's funny how fear kind of is a pop culture phenomenon. Right? It is. Like things that become scary are based on the, the zeitgeist or whatever. It's also funny how fears are kind of taught to you. Yeah. Because if your parents are afraid of clowns, then you'll probably be afraid of clowns. The only know? one I don't get, my grandson and my granddaughter, and it drives me nuts because I'm so not this way. My grandson and granddaughter are deathly, deathly afraid of any kind of bug. Really? Yeah, if, if there's a bug in the pool or in the water... Oh my God! They're getting, they're crawling all over me and screaming. Even if it's like a butterfly, even a butterfly. Rivers has little. Uh, he has natural little freakouts to flying bugs, like or stuff. Go, oh wow! Ah, ah. But I'll just tell him it's okay. It's no big deal. And then and then he calms down. But his initial inclination is definitely to to be creeped out at first. Yeah. Martin Berger says, when I was a kid, a clown showed me a plastic flower and then splashed me with, with the water. Nick, are you that kind of guy? <laughs> now, now I know why you had, had to live in a closet for many years. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. All right, Martin Berger. How did you work out the snarl for a wolf or werewolf? Like uh, which muscles pull up, etc. It's the muscles on the side of the on the side of the muzzle. They contract. They contract towards the top of the muzzle. So when you think about that, they um. When you think about that kind of contraction, it just it pulls up from the teeth, pulls up from the front, and curls towards the top. I um. I pulled back from it quite a bit. Ryan says, I was like that with bugs as a kid, too, but it vanished as I got older. The what? Just he was afraid of bugs as a kid, but it vanished as he got older. Oh. So maybe they'll grow out of it, is the gist of it. I hope so. Otherwise, I'm disowning him. By the way, if you like this video, please hit that like button or share it or smash that button. Spread the word. Helps us a lot. Some of you do it religiously and we see you, so thank you very much. So I'm just going in really loosely. Just hang on loosely. Hang on loosely. First time viewer on uh, Twitch, Lily Petite Panda says, Hello, I really like your drawing. It's unbelievable, and I hope to have your skill level one day. Well, thank you, Lily Petite Panda. Uh, did you watch the new Dune movie? Uh, last week, I went to the cinema to watch it with my father. He's a big Dune fan, and the movie is great. Man, I did see it. What a piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is awesome. Absolutely gorgeous scenery. No, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I re and I really like the pacing, and I cannot wait for the next one if they 
Yeah, my, I just I didn't know it was a trilogy going into it. I think they're only doing it as two. They just greenlit the second one. I didn't realize that they hadn't greenlit the second one. It was kind of up in the air based on box office, but it's done well enough. Well, shoot, if that's the case, because it, I mean, there's so much pre production or post production in that movie. Um, they but, said 2023 is the release. You're kidding me? Yeah. How are they turning those around so fast? Well, look at the credits. I think what they're doing is they've just got 50 special effects studios all working. I, I don't even know room. how they can shoot it that fast. Although, I guess most of it was probably shot on a green screen. Yeah. And I think a lot, uh, quite a bit of it, like the desert scenery, I think they actually went to specific desert locations. Yeah. 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 I got to pull, pull up some wolf reference. See, this is the beauty of keeping the, uh, your your animal reference close. Twitch question. Aaron, do you have an irrational fear of anything? No. I have an irrational fear. Uh, when I was young, when my kids were born, uh, I had an irrational fear of losing my kids. Um, which is... Like their know. life or losing them like in a mall or something? Their life. Yeah. I would have nightmares about it. Yeah, I think that's... Somewhat normal. If you search, are you looking for a wolf errand? You can just type wolf in the search. Oh yeah, bar. that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> and it gives me coyotes. There we go, wolves. I've got more wolves than this. I know that. I'm I sure. know you can also type Bozeman, by the way. Bozeman, Montana. I'm just looking for markings. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, while while driving in a uh, while driving to a campground at night, I asked my boys what would scare them the most, and they said clowns. <laughs> Where'd my wolf go? Did you watch Marvel's What If show, and did you like it? I really enjoyed it. What's 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 on What If? It's the animated one on. Disney Plus. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. the Watcher and uh, like the. It was hit and miss for me. I I thought I thought it was uneven, but I enjoyed it overall. Um, Armand Serrano did a bunch of work on that. Yeah, he did. He uh, did visual development, I think, for all those episodes. Like, um, and he's almost done with his course for us. I know. Should be out before the holidays. It's the plan. I really loved uh, Love, Death, and Robots. Manuel on uh, YouTube asks, Hello, how Hello. about doing some drawing in Clip Studio Paint? Don't you like it? Clip Studio Paint. Funny you should say that. I'm starting to get, uh, I'm, I'm educating myself on it. Yeah, we're going to do a future live stream with that because they now support Photoshop brushes and we want to test out how our brushes work and plan is to have Darren, Aaron kind of going cold on a live stream. Yeah. We know oh, that a lot of you young people out there use that as your... Clip Studio and Krita, those are popular... What's this uh, pencilish stuff I've been seeing? Pencilish is a, a studio, a crowdfunded studio started by the Bancroft brothers. That's Tom, though, right? Because yeah, Tony's yeah. just on the board. Tom, right? Yeah, Tom. Tony's just on the board. Yeah, you, uh, thanks. Um, that um, uh, you can invest in, become part owner in. Um, I'm not. I'm not involved with the studio. I'm, I'm there as a creative consultant for their projects. Uh, but um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting uh, thing that they've got going. Basically, they're trying to do original 2D animated uh, series uh, to be released online. And, yeah. Uh, so far, what they've put out looks hilarious. So. Yeah, they've got some great content in there. And I know they're working hard at, you know, trying to keep up with their their timetable that they've set up.
Have you been using a uh, cor uh, coral paint uh, Corel? painter? Corel painter. Uh, I haven't used it in a while, but I, I do use. I I have used it. Yes, I used to use it a lot more than I do now. Um. Wow, this brush lags. I might have to pull out a different brush. Uh, have you ever seen manatees in the Everglades? Um, yes. Sketch them. Yes. I've swam with manatees. We have manatees in the river right by our house right here. Twitch comment. I actually recently imported your brush sets into into Clip Studio Paint, and I found they work perfect, perfectly. I'm using your Pastel C brush right now. For me, it works even better than in Photoshop. <laughs> That's great. I like hearing that. <clears throat> we go even more yellow. Uh, this is for the uh, latecomers concerning the uh, the books. It says, hey, Aaron, I was one, uh, I was one of your pre-order people for your book, but haven't received it yet. Uh, how can I find out the status of my book? Well, we uh, the status is because of COVID, everything is locked up everywhere, all over the place. Uh, Houston, L.A., the ports. I mean, this is something that we had no idea was going to happen when we when we uh, ordered the books, um, but the books are in Los Angeles port. Um, and we just got notification that UPS is getting ready to take possession of them, which would be great for us considering um, after that, they would be making their way to us. Yep. Um, it's just a matter of uh, they're still in the port. We should be hopefully receiving them in the next one to two weeks. That would be the, the tentative timeline. It's if what they're saying is accurate. Yeah, and so and once we receive them, then they um, instantly we are dropping everything and signing them and getting them in the mail to you yep. guys. And when you get it in the mail, you will get a notification that we've shipped it. So we'll, it's soon. We're so sorry that it's taken so long. It was out of our hands once... Uh, Everything got backed up in Asia. But that's why we're signing, Aaron is signing all of them. Exactly. Uh, are you using your standard Photoshop file size for this one? Uh, 18 by 24, right? 18 by 24, 300 DPI, yes. What are you doing? Change it. GG. How do you reduce that uh that brush lag? I've been dealing with that lately, even after doing some major updates on my computer. How do I do reduce the brush line? Lag. Like oh, you have to. Your... It's it's most of the time it's the brush is too big, so you have to do a smaller file, or get a or get a heavier duty uh, computer. That's really basically what it comes down to. Unfortunately, like I can't, that's too much of a lag right there. I gotta. Uh, 
Uh, Eric oh Bates asking, will you guys be going to CTN Animation Expo this year? If they're having it, yeah, we'll be there. I don't know that they're having it. You know, I, you know, we better find out quick. What's happening? They haven't communicated with us. Microsoft. Uh, oh yeah, according to their website, they're having it November fifteenth through twenty first. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, okay. I'm with you, fellas. I'll lighten that nose up and then I'm going to shade it in later. What's the longest time you spent on a single painting, and why did it take so long? Uh, probably a month, because of this. It was huge. It was a big painting, big elephant, uh, almost life size um, portrait that I did. Part of that's because of probably oil, right? And it was in oil, yeah. La -da -da, la -da -da. I haven't had any new questions lately. What's that? I haven't had any new questions lately. Oh, we got questions. I'm just letting them draw. Oh. Apparently, my comments did not update.
Uh, any tips for dealing with overworking your composition? Stop it. <laughs> stop it. Yeah, Get stop some help. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it, it comes with experience, but we all go through it overworking. I try to keep everything loose and fresh like I'm doing here. Um, and it helps a fair amount. Any plans on visit visiting Austria in the future? Austria? Austria. Um, yeah, I've always wanted to go to Austria. I just haven't gone yet. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite composer? Um, James Horner was my favorite when he was alive. I always had dreams of getting him to score something for us. Would it be possible to show us your brush settings? Uh, yeah, you can see them right now. I've got my my brush settings folder open. Awesome. Can you see everything? I don't know. It's kind I don't of... know if they can see it. It's right here. But I, I mean, the settings are not. They're nothing special. The um. It's it's how the brush is is made that makes it special. Um, if you, I've got my texture dual brush is turned on on this brush. Um, there's a couple of things that make this brush special, but it's right in my. Um, it's in my, my custom brush set. Are you guys thinking about getting the M1 Apple products? We We're definitely have stop the lagging. We already have one uh, for our travel kit, and the answer is yes. The new chips are amazing. Why do people play dead when they encounter a dangerous uh, grizzly bear? And did you why? do that? <laughs> why do I think they do? Why Why do people play dead when they when they encounter a dangerous grizzly bear? So they don't get killed. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain animals that you should play dead with, so they'll just leave you alone. And the reason you're playing dead is because a lot of times when a grizzly bear attacks, he's not attacking you for food. He's attacking you. Or she is attacking you because they fear um, you might be a threat to cubs or something like that. And so if you play dead, don't move. They'll see you as not a threat anymore and leave you alone. Now, sometimes once in a great while, you will be attacked as a result of an animal being starved, starving. And they see you as a food source, in which case you have to fight for your life. Yeah, exactly. I've heard playing dead makes sense if it's a mother and cubs and she doesn't think you're a threat anymore. But yeah, if it's if it's a hungry bear, playing dead is the exact opposite of what you want to do. Right. And a lot of times when a black bear attacks you, um, because they'll they'll just keep on going, you gotta fight for your life. Playing dead with a black bear doesn't always isn't the right answer quite often. For young artists just starting out, would you recommend starting digital or traditional? I always recommend going traditional. Um, but you know, it's my it's it, I'm I'm biased to that because that's my where I came from. And Caroline uh, says to Nick, uh, the new iPad twenty twenty one. Is fantastic. The extra RAM makes Photoshop 
Clip Studio and Procreate so smooth. Yeah, I've heard great things about it. Hey, Caroline. Maya. Maya? What, what's Maya got to do with it? My my great-great-grandfather, great-great-great-grandfather, A.F. Tate, uh, actually, I went and he was a, uh, what do you call that, Hudson Valley or Adirondack School? Of Hudson Valley. Ago. Yeah. Went and saw his self-portrait in the Smithsonian. It's of him fighting a black bear. Yes. True story where he was attacked by a bear. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Crazy, crazy stuff. Some wild, wild stuff. And my bird, bird is asking the question, how is no bear going? Well, I haven't touched it in a few weeks. I've been working on our new course. The new course is coming along, though, pretty nicely. Yeah. Uh, why are you coloring the edges white? Because he's going to be backlit. He's going to be rimlet. You'll see. I don't have it. It's not working yet. It's all in preparation. You'll see. Uh, what's the difference between a lowland gorilla and a mountain gorilla? Uh, probably uh, one's low, one's high. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. No, it's, it's exactly that. They live in the lowlands, and the mountain gorillas live up in the mountains. There are there's small species uh, differences, but they're really small. They're they're basically the same species, just different locations. Yeah. Martin says I I had to ask that question because nobody asked that question today. About snow bear. Yeah. Is there any word on a uh, background course? Not yet. It's in the works. But we will have one. And my Af Africa photos are almost ready to be presentable. USB-C? Uh, are there any future places you guys are planning to go to, like the Maasai Mara trip? Alaska, eventually, but no immediate plans, right? Yeah. Where to? Alaska. Alaska. Mm -hmm. That would be fun. That's funny. Someone wrote, how's Snow Bear coming? Aaron's response, he plays dead. <laughs> Truth. What's your new animation course called and when will it be available? It's Advanced Animation. I'm starting a new series called Advanced Animation Techniques. And this one's going to be called Separating the Performance from the Mechanics. So what I'm doing is taking complex animated shots. I'm just going to go ahead and tell everybody now. I've been keeping it secret, but I'm uh, going to take complex animated shots um, and show you my way of approaching it because it, there's a lot to think about when you have a, a shot that's complex. And so what I do is I just separate them. I think about if, let's say, I have a character that's putting on a coat, I know I have to go through the process of putting on that coat no matter what is happening in the, in the uh, performance. And so I'll focus on that, and I, I might shoot live action for reference, but I'll figure it all out, get it drawn, 
And then I can put my, I can space out the drawings so that the performance will work over the top of it. I can show you really quick. If you don't mind. Do you think it's all right, Nick? I think it's all right. Just show them this little piece. Sure. Why not? This is a little sneak peek of, um, uh, this is a complex shot of uh, a character coming in and putting on his coat, but also delivering the dialogue. I've got a lot more left to do in it, but I'm taking the viewer um, through the entire process of what I think about. Um, so each section is actually pretty, it's pretty full, but here's a, uh, here's a quick shot. <coughs> so he comes, oh, actually you can't hear the dialogue. Let me, we turn on the dialogue. There we go. Let's start that over again. Look, you got two choices. You can either avoid the storm or you can face it, ride it out. See, the thing is, if you learn to ride it out, the storm's not a problem anymore. Well, I'll play one more time. Look, you got two choices. You can either avoid the storm or you can face it, ride it out. See, the thing is, if you learn to ride it out, the storm's not a problem anymore. So here I'm covering very complex, uh, but I but the idea is when you have something that's complex like that, you want to break it down so it's not so complex. It, it plays nice and simple, and that's the idea behind that. And that um, uh, and you can uh, enjoy the the performance, you know, instead. And then um, yeah, and that's that. So there you go. Um. Sorry, I got sidetracked under this illustration too, uh, but it's um, it's coming along really well. We're really happy with it, and um, I'm also going to be talking about um, X sheets, exposure sheets, and how you chart. You know, because this, especially for something for stuff like that, it can get really complex. Um, you know, covering all that kind of stuff as well. It's one that I'm really excited about, and um, uh, for you animators out there, I think it's going to be a huge help. I wish I had someone that taught me what I when I'm teaching in this because it took me years to figure it out, <laughs> and the way that I'm approaching it. Well, there you go. If you had a chance to go to the International Space Station, would you take it? Yeah. In a heartbeat. Without, without any hesitation. Why did Walt Disney hire Leopold uh, uh, Stokowski for uh, Fantasia? Uh, to get the best music he could? I don't know. Two twenty, by the way, Aaron. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Let me just get a couple more things in here. Uh, when you worked at Disney, did you have assistants uh, check details in your drawings, like spacing, etc.? No, they didn't. It was my job to come up with the spacing, but we did have assistants that helped me with in betweens, and and uh, we have final checkers that go through and make sure that can, the the consistency is all there. Next is my own own personal question, but did you ever 
have trouble getting the getting the spacing down to get the timing right? Not Can really. We... I mean, it, well, that's that's what animation is 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 figuring out your your spacing in order to to do your timing. And so, you know, when you're first starting out, understanding that is difficult. Yeah. What's the easiest way to to learn to understand? Uh, Just by doing it, because it's it's one of those things that, um, you know, you have to have an intu intuition because spacing goes through goes along with understanding the timing. You have to understand what twenty four frames a second through a camera, what that means and how does that break down to individual drawings, and that'll give you a sense of how to space your drawings. Could watching a a movie or a video in slow motion help? Oh yeah, absolutely. So that? Yep, yep, that does help. The more you know. Yeah. Actually, I did have a. Um, there was another question that I had uh, yesterday on pencilish, but I wasn't sure whether or not to ask it. But when it comes to like CG characters, like you know how uh, for C for CGI they have an actual rigging crew where they build up the skeletons for the characters yep. that people animate. Yeah. Was there a similar thing uh, for for traditional animation, or or like how did you guys approach on like what what the limitation of the movements were? That's all in your head. That's the beauty of doing hand drawn animation is that the the limitation is in is in the artist's mind. So a lot of it, depending on the style of the movie, we could get away with more or less. Meaning if you look at Pocahontas, which is a very realistic approach to the animation, matter of fact, they shot every uh, every shot was shot in live action. And so um, you know, getting really stretchy and squatchy with it um although you can get away with a lot more than you realize and still make it feel real um but you know we didn't want to get super stretchy and squashy with it now at the same time um you look at something like uh say aladdin aladdin exactly because Gen genie had a bunch of squash and strips oh yeah we were able to get away with a lot of that But even in the ones that were kind of in the middle, like Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast, we got a lot away with a lot of squash and stretch. I really uh, distorted the Beast a lot. And uh, Jen is asking, uh, could you mirror this drawing? Yep, one second. Just want to rough up the edges a little bit where the lights come, like there's stray hairs and some wisps, whatnot. Yeah, I'll just flop it. And there it is. It looks a little wonky. Uh, did you have to make uh, changes to animation a lot at Disney if uh, the motion wasn't wasn't true to the character? You no. Know, well, after a while, you get used to, um, you know how a character is supposed to move. But every every shot you do is is a, a new learning experience, and you get to know that character. We were just talking about this yesterday with the Bancrofts, where you know we were, we're one of the things we always joked about is that when the by the time you're done animating a movie, then that then you know your character well enough to actually start animating it. And so, you know, you, when you watch an animated film, you're watching a, a, an animator's growth throughout that film as they come to understand, you know, how that character is built and make adjustments. And, you know, a lot of times it's a year of experimentation before you, you go, oh, yeah, now I got it. And then you go, well, there's... There's no more shots to be animated. 
Will you end up posting the finished piece of this to social media? Uh, sure. You usually do. And the whole talk of understanding um, the characters reminds me a lot of um, when I was working in, in 3D depth because it was not it was a matter of understanding the characters, more of understanding the three D depth that that they that the client wanted us to do. Yeah. Because um every three D movie was different in which one could be almost like uh like car they'll be so flat they're like cards floating in space. Oh yeah. Uh, others can be extremely detailed like very deep backgrounds or shallow backgrounds or just all these different combinations of what the what the clients want and usually it would take take us like anywhere between one to three shots like by the third shot we'd usually have it down to a point where we understand what the client really wants and yeah. work around that exactly i that's, mean that's kind they, of what i'm talking about and they do give us like uh the type of notes of like we like where the thing where the foundation is they give us the foundation stuff when we get the project but then from there we just kind of work with what we think they want right and i remember um the one and only time i ever got a first pass approval on my first shot of a project doesn't that always feel good? Oh, so satisfying. <laughs> it was in it was in the movie Need for Speed. And it was a it was a simple like like a two second shot of a of the uh protagonist's car trying to dodge a, a car coming head on. And simple two seconds, but it took me like a week to build it up. And uh went into dailies. And the supervisors looked at it after seeing all these other all these other shots and getting multiple notes on those shots. But the mind comes up and you're thinking, they, "Oh man, here it comes!" It's like, "Oh boy!" And it rolls, and they sit there for like a full minute that felt like a full hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like play you know why? Because they're looking for something wrong with it. And they couldn't find anything. They're like, can, can you play frame by frame where they actually... Yeah, and that's always bugs me too. If you don't see it when it's playing at speed, don't do the frame by frame. Yeah, they did frame by frame quite often. But some of the, some of the guys, though, uh, some of the other supervisors were really good where they could see, see what's wrong like right off the bat. But yeah, these guys, like one guy said, I don't see anything wrong. Uh, <laughs> do you, do I don't you see, see anything, anything wrong? wrong? No. Like, all right, approved. And uh, in my lead, when we were walking back to our uh, bullpens, was like, "You're getting car shots from here on out." <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah, it was. It was my favorite project was working on Need for Speed. Very practical, and I got to build build out a lot of cars in depth. All right, finishing up here, and. Uh, See, Stephen uh, says, uh, I'm sure it happens a lot where animators uh, finished a scene and they knew it could have been it could have been done better. Oh, yeah. Well, um, depending on the shot, we don't, you know, good enough is good enough is no damn good. That's our that was always our saying. And so um, if it was a I mean, if it was a, a shot that you should take some time on, then. We took some time on them, and uh, let me do this. Do you agree with the phrase that it takes ten thousand hours to become a master in something? Uh, yeah, I yes, I do. Uh, whether or not it's ten thousand hours, it's a it's a significant amount of time. That I do believe. Dustin, uh, can you tell us about your job in the 3D movie industry? How does this magic work? Uh, well, the simple definition of what I do is that um, if you ever saw a movie in 3D, like with the glasses, 
uh, uh, I was responsible to make that happen, uh, where we would get the get the footage in in flat two D like you would with a normal camera, but we would create what's called a false eye, where we would roto uh, we would have a rotoscope team rotoscope all the all the stuff it, where if it's like the individual fingers of a hand or an entire face or just all the everything on the character and set would be rotoscoped and we go in create a fault a false eye to create that 3d depth and we start moving things in that virtual space and using different um in-house plugins for a software called nuke um we would be able to create not only depth but also shape and angle and uh, be able to animate all that in the footage and uh, usually it would take take me about it could take a couple of days to a week um, to get a shot done. But what's your favorite Halloween song? <laughs> the this Monster is Mash. Halloween. This is <laughs> Halloween. Monster, Monster Mash. Mash. Oh, that's a classic. Thriller. The graveyard Smash. Thriller's a good. One. This is the Monster. That yeah, Thriller's Mash. great. This is a graveyard Smash. There we go. Here's our Wolfman. Wolfman. Not the greatest, but it was fun. Werewolf. 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 Why didn't they just shoot it with two cameras? Wouldn't that be easier? It could, but the the two cameras could actually it's higher budget. Details. Yeah, huh? it's higher budget too. Yeah, it's a higher budget. Things could get um, like. You need to be have the camera set up perfectly, um, because if one is aligned just by a centimeter, it could throw the entire three D effect off. So, it's a lot, as Dad said, it's a lot easier and less, and it's even less time consuming to just film in two D and then uh, send the footage to a three D company. Like one of the biggest three uh, D companies that I that I worked for was Stereo D and that's where I worked on a lot of projects. And, um, yeah. And also it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of fun being able to build it all out. A lot of films are filmed in 3D though. You know, huh? There are a lot of films that are filmed in 3D. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there definitely are, but they're like super, super high budget. Like, yeah. Avatar was made. It was yeah. Know, shot and made that way. Yeah. But they also had the benefit of CG because in CGI you can just artificially yep. add a second eye. Um, well, it's not always that simple because it depends on some of maybe the, some of the shortcuts that you did right. to get to that point. But yeah, a lot of times it is. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. There's our wolf man. Wolf. Wolf. Ow. 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 Oh, Happy good. Halloween! I think I saw him at uh, Trader Vic's drinking a pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> Wheels of London. You know, that's the same music as Sweet Home Alabama. Is it? Yep. Yep. Bam, da, 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 Yep. Oh, that's cool. Uh, what am I going to do? You know he's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He shouldn't be. I know. Morton Zevon? Yeah. I know. If anybody out there is listening and has any sway with that, make it happen. That's right. Now, what movies did I work on? I worked on uh, the, my very first project... Uh, with with the same biz, uh, same company that uh, Dad was with uh, was uh, Transformers, Dark of the Moon, and live action Smurfs. And then at Stereo D, um, my very first project there was uh, Star Trek uh, Into Darkness. And then from there worked on Iron Man three, Pacific Rim, a little bit of Godzilla, Godzilla, Godzilla. 2014 
Um, Need for Speed, my favorite. Uh, G.I. Joe, Retaliation. Thor 2, Guardians of the Galaxy. Captain America Winter Soldier, X-Men. Oh, no. Uh, Days of Future Past. Um, King oh. Arthur. Which style uh, is that for you? Star Wars, Force Awakens, and uh, and a little bit of Rogue One. Uh, and uh, what was it? Independence Day, Resurgence Day. And the very last project I was in the middle of when I got let go was uh, uh, Doctor Strange. That was the last one I was working on. And uh, yeah, give it a little border. I can't remember if there was any other projects I was. I mean, I said I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I did all that in a span of I would say three, four years. Yeah, that's about right. And two of those year, two of those last years was living in uh, Toronto, 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 when they decided to uh, move the move the company or the ma- major portion of the company in uh, Toronto. She put the phone a little lower, I think, Karen. Jeez, <sighs> what well, is a critic? I think you're right. How do you know when you need to replace a, a nib on your stylus pen? Uh, when it gets annoyingly uh, nibby, mis- misshapen, <laughs> misshapen. <laughs> it's just by feel and personal taste, right? Yeah. And yes, I did work on Rogue One just just for a little bit. I only worked on it for like maybe just a few weeks. I think I worked on like one of the parts they used for the trailer for Rogue One. All right, you guys. Remember, we got a sale going on at CreatureArtTeacher.com. It's our Halloween sale going on all this weekend. Ooh. And uh, yeah, everything is 30% off, with a lot of things being up to 60% off. So go check that out. And um, and also, we have got uh, Tony Cipriano's new course that's going to be, uh, we're going to be, it's going to be coming up soon. But you can pre-order it now. So go on over to Creature Art Teacher for that. Um, and like I showed you earlier, if you were if you were here earlier, you saw all those cool maquettes that he made. Tony's just an amazing sculptor. Um, he's done the other two sculpting courses that we have on our on our site. He did one uh, sculpting in ZBrush. We did a traditional one where we sculpted a figure, and uh, in this one he's going to be sculpting monsters. Both of which are also on sale right now as part of our Halloween sale. Exactly. So that's really exciting. And uh, let me blow this up even more so you can see it. Here. That was fun. That was a fun one to draw. Happy Halloween. So I hope everyone has a safe, happy Halloween. And uh, like I said, we're going to see the Rolling Stones. Let's see, Rolling Stones? Yeah. Yeah. Rolling Stone Gaza. Yeah, it looks really nice when you zoom in on it. Thanks. It is great news. I think that seeing the Rolling Stones is going to be satisfying, despite (laughs) what they say. (laughs) Well, we'll we'll see if we can get some satisfaction. Exactly. But, um, yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to have a good time. And uh, and then Halloween, we'll have a good time. We always have a tradition of go out and buy a ton of king-size candy bars. Full size candy bars. They're huge. Or king size. They actually Yeah, we always always had a good reputation. Then I, I get the fireplace. Uh, my portable fire pit set up in the front driveway. Start start a fire, start pouring drinks, and give out candy. I love it. And this is our this is going to be your first uh, our first year in the, the, the new house. house. Yeah, so we'll see we'll see if we get any uh, traction with the kids. I'm not sure how good this neighborhood's going to be for that. I think it should be good. You see, this neighborhood feels very neighborhoody. It does feel neighborhoody. Neighborhoody. In the neighborhoody, I forgot one thing. One thing? You forgot the one thing. thing. Ding, ding. There it is. There it is. One more thing. Oh. There we go. You forgot them whiskers, didn't you? Oh, and one last thing while he's doing the one more thing. Uh, <clears throat> there's still a chance to pre-order our uh, his two art books that are coming out. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash books, you can pre-order now. And we will be shipping those out soon they should be coming to us any day 
any day. So they are in the United States. We're just waiting for them to get to us. So get your pre-orders in now because if you miss the pre-order, you don't get a signed copy. There you go. All right, everybody, we are on our way out. So thanks. I hope you guys had a good time. Go out and draw something scary this weekend. Yeah. And uh, have a safe weekend. Have a fun weekend. Make sure your kids have a good time. Let them eat all the candy they want. Make sure they get sick. <laughs> we'll do that with you guys. <laughs> or, or wait till the kids go to bed and eat all the best candy. That's, a, the, that's the pro move. Right? <laughs> that's, what that, that, that's the pro <laughs> gamer move right there. <laughs> so anyway, have a great weekend, and we will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And for anyone that is interested in wildlife photography, you can check out my Instagram at Dustin underscore Blaze, where I try to post a new photo every other uh, day during the week. And also, uh, while waiting for my Africa pack, you can still gain access to my Yellowstone pack, as well as my Florida packs. And they're, all, they're also part of the Halloween sale. So be sure to go over there and check those out. And I'll see you guys next week. And as always, Cowboy Bebop! Ooh.